Jake Drake Bullybuster by Andrew Clement. Chapter 1 Bully Magnet. I'm Jake, Jake Drake. I'm in fourth grade, which is my best grade so far. I've got a man teacher this year, Mr. Thompson. He's pretty old, but he's not mean. And he likes the same kinds of books I do. Adventure stories, books about volcanoes and jungles and the ocean, joke books, Calvin and Hobbes, stuff like that. But there is one thing about Mr. Thompson that's weird. Pete was the first to see it, which makes sense. Pete is a science kid. He collects bugs and fossils and plants and he knows all their names, and he's maybe the smartest kid in the school. After about two weeks of school, Pete pointed at Mr. Thompson, then he whispered, He's wearing those pants again. Which pants? I said. Those pants, Pete said. The same pants he wore yesterday, and the day before, and the day before that. I think he wears the same pants every day. No way, I said. He probably has a lot of pants that are the same, that's all. So Pete said, I'm going to test my theory. See what I mean? That's how science kids are. That afternoon we had read aloud time on the rug and Mr. Thompson sat in a beanbag chair. Pete sat right next to Mr. Thompson and a little behind him. Mr. Thompson started reading and he got to the part when the Swiss family Robinson wrecks their ship. All the other kids were looking at Mr. Thompson's face or at the ceiling or somewhere. I was watching Pete. Pete pulled his hand out of his pocket. His hand went behind Mr. Thompson's foot just for a second and then back to his pocket and then Pete sat and listened like everyone else. When reading was over, I got next to Pete and whispered, what did you do? Pete grinned and pulled something out of his pocket. It was a little black marker, the kind that doesn't wash out. I got behind Mr. Thompson and looked down. On the right leg of his pants, on the back of his cuff, was a tiny black spot. So that's how we found out that Mr. Thompson really has two pairs of pants. Every Thursday he wears tan pants that are just like the other pair but they don't have the little block spot and they look a little newer. Pete's theory is that Thursday must be laundry day at Mr. Thompson's house, because every Friday we can see the little spot again. My best friend is Phil Willis. Everyone calls him Willie. Willie isn't in my class this year. We have gym class and music class and art class together, but for the rest of the time, Willie has Mrs. Till. I'm glad I have Mr. Thompson. I mean, Mrs. Still is okay, but Willie has a lot more homework than I do. Also, Mrs. Still is a spelling nut, and a math nut, and a social status nut. I guess she's a nut about everything. That's why Willie's favorite class this year is gym. Like I said, I'm in fourth grade. That means I've been going to school for five years now. And if you count the two years I went to Miss Lulu's Dainty Diaper Daycare Center, plus one year of preschool, then it's more like eight years. Eight years of school. So here's what I can't figure out. If everybody who works at school is so smart, how come they can't get rid of the bullies? How come when it comes to bullies, kids are mostly on their own? Because every year it's the same thing. Bullies. Here's what I mean. Okay, it was way back when I was three. I was at Miss Lulu's daycare. It was the middle of the morning on my second day, and I was standing in line for milk and cookies. And this kid with a runny nose and baggy overalls cut right in front of me. I didn't say anything because I didn't know any better. Remember, I was only three back then? For all I knew, kids with runny noses got to go first. So I took my cookies and my milk and sat down at a table. Nose boy sat down across from me. I smiled at him and took a drink of my milk. And what did he do? He reached over and grabbed both my cookies. Before I could swallow my milk, he took a big slobbery bite from each one. 
Then he put them back on my napkin, and then he smiled at me. I looked at the stuff coming out of his nose. Then I looked at my cookies, and then I turned my head to look for Miss Lulu. She was still handing out goodies. A crime had taken place, but Miss Lulu was busy. So I reached over real fast and took his cookies, but then I looked down. Noseboy had already taken a bite out of them, too. He smiled again, and I could see the crumbs and chocolate chips stuck in his teeth. So I thought to myself, who needs a snack anyway? I slid his cookies back across the table, drank the rest of my milk, and went outside to play. Three minutes later, I was on a swing, just trying to get it going. And somebody grabbed the chain. That's right, it was Noseboy again. He snuffled a little and said, mine. Nose boy wasn't much of a talker. Then I said something like, I got here first. That was a mistake. The first rule of dealing with a bully is never try to tell him why he's wrong. Bullies don't like that. He yanked hard on the chain and said, No, mine. I looked around and Miss Lulu was on the other side of the playground. Then Nose boy jerked on the chain again. So I got off the swing. Nose boy was my first bully, and for the next four years, I was a bully magnet. In preschool, it was Mike Rada. I called him Destructo. Blocks, Legos, popsicle sticks, crayons, and paper, no matter what I made or what it was made out of, Destructo tore it to bits. In kindergarten, it was Kenny Russell. Kenny was King Bump. There are a lot of times every day when a bump or a shove can be bad. Like if you're standing next to a puddle at a bus stop. Or when you're drinking a carton of chocolate milk. Or maybe when you're working on a painting. If there was a bumpable moment, King Bump was there all through kindergarten. In first grade, my main bully was Jack Lerner, also known as the Fist. Jack never actually hit me. He just hit things close to me, like my lunch bag. Like every day, a big fist does a very bad thing to a Wonder Bread sandwich. And I learned real fast not to bring any little containers of pudding. All during first grade, I ate cookie crumbs for dessert. So, that was me. I was Jake Drake, the bully magnet. It was like all the bullies got together to choose their favorite target. Every bully for miles around seemed to know that I was the perfect kid to pick on, and I think I finally figured out why they all like me so much. For one thing, bullies need a kid who's just the right size. If the kid is too big, then there might be a fight someday. Bullies don't like to fight, and if the kid is too small, then the bullying is too easy. There's no challenge. Another thing about me that bullies like is that I don't have a big brother or even a big sister. I just have Abby, and she's two years younger than me. Bullies figure out stuff like that right away, and bullies can tell that I'm not the kind of kid who runs to tell the teacher all my problems. Whiny tattle tales make bad bully bait. Also, I think I look kind of brainy. Most bullies don't seem so smart, and when they see a kid who looks like he is, something inside a bully says, Oh yeah? Well, now you've got to deal with me, smart guy. And I guess I am a smart guy, because I am good at thinking. And because I'm a good thinker, I finally learned what to do about bullies. But I didn't figure all this out at once. It took me four long years. It took having to deal with nose boy and then distract to and king bump and the feast. It also took being picked on by a certified grade A super bully, which is what happened back when I was in second grade. That's the year I became Jake Drake, bully bastard.